So low test, high trend, high masterone to match. I think I was running 175 milligrams testosterone propionate when the Tremolone went from 700 milligrams per week up to 1,000 milligrams per week. And that's when everything fell apart. Vigor Steve here. So apparently you guys wanted to see my worst cycle stories ever. I mean, who would have known? I wouldn't have guessed. But this is what you voted for. So this is what you're going to get. And even though I've made similar videos like this in the past discussing polycythemia and hyperlipidemia and proteinuria, in particular drug combinations to get the worst possible side effects, if that's what you're after, I've made videos discussing all of the potential side effects of Trimbalone and how to mitigate them. I mean, everybody has a love-hate relationship with Trimbalone, right? You love the way you look on Trimbalone, but you hate yourself for hating how you feel while running Trimbalone. So I've made similar videos like this in the past, but this is what you guys want to see. And I've run many a cycle in the past. Well, that's not true. I've run five cycles, but the third one, that was almost a decade long full with blasting and cruising. So I've gained a lot of experience during this time, made a lot of mistakes, plenty of stories to share. So here we are. Um, which one should we start with first? All right. I know which one. How about we discuss running a thousand milligrams Tremblone per week and how horrible it was, right? Let's start there. But before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to vote for upcoming 10 minute video topics, which were suggested by you guys, you can find the link down below in the description section as well as in the comment section. You ready? Okay, grab onto your Ventolin inhaler, put a nice comfy rug in the bathroom right next to the toilet bowl so you can hug it. A thousand milligrams of Tremblone per week will give you some serious, serious and deleterious trend cough. The year was 2012. A young, dumb and very impressionable Vigor Steve found his way to the GH15 message board. I mean, I guess I don't really know what to say. This was over a decade ago. Um, I didn't really know as much about steroids as I know right now. Was it a mistake to register? Potentially, right? I learned a lot of bad habits off the GH15 message boards. Even though the first year, it was actually quite good. I found GH15 through getbig.com, even though I never felt the need to register over on getbig because everybody always got outed and, well, people were constantly arguing with each other. Uh, I should have just stayed on intense muscle, but... You know, sometimes you got to learn the hard way. So GH15 opened up his own boards. The first year was great. A lot of people that you might know from the fitness industry were actually there. But now looking back on it, I think the large majority of the people there were just one-upping each other with more and more Trimbolone or other performance enhancing drugs. I mean, the whole forum obviously loved Trimbolone because GH15 loved and touted and promoted Trimbolone like none other. And I think it was only me and TNN Clark, who also was a member, actually talked about blood work results. Tiana Clark made a whole post, a whole thread about how to interpret your blood work results and which particular markers were important for bodybuilders. So Tiana Clark, I remember that fondly. And as soon as the Trimbalone acetate arrived, like literally from the mailbox straight to the syringe, I started with 50 milligrams Trimbalone acetate per day, which was considered a low dose, an entry dose <laughs> for Trimbalone acetate. I mean, those were the days, right? Nowadays, we would consider maybe 25 milligrams Trimbalone three times per week as a good starting dose, 75 milligrams per week. Uh, but back then, due to GH15's influence, 350 milligrams right off the start. So that's what was recommended. So that's what I did. I had decent results, certainly a better results than running Trimbalone anthates the cycle before. So now we're talking at the third cycle that lasted, yeah, a decade in duration. So let's say the second blast of the third cycle. Um, 350 milligrams Tremolone acetate per week. I got good results. I went from 95 kilos to, I think I recomped, stayed around 95 kilos. And, and guys, keep in mind that now I'm around 95 kilos as well, right? So <laughs> this is like 12, 13 years ago. Then I had to struggle, really work hard to get up to 100 kilos. And now I maintain around 100 kilos or right below it reasonably easily. I really have to suffer down and diet hard and take the performance enhancing drugs out to get below 95 kilos. The lowest I got to was 92 kilos. But right now, as you see me coming back from holiday and staying in a Clorin's maintenance phase, 95 kilos on HCG and recombinant FSH. Things have changed a lot. So anyway... I was struggling or trying to sustain around 95 kilos back then. 
um, you know, due to peer pressure and everybody egging each other on, I decided to go to 525 milligrams per week. So I did 75 milligrams per day. I ran that for a couple of weeks in duration. So I think by the time I increased to 700 milligrams per week, 100 milligrams of and acetate per day, I was already on trend for at least eight weeks. Yeah, I'm not proud of this, but maybe it was already 12 weeks. I think I ran Tremblone for like 16 <laughs> weeks in duration. Oh, I'm fucking embarrassed talking about it. But hey, uh, you guys wanted the story, so here it is. So I, uh, at 525 milligrams per week, I started getting the usual side effects, right? I started getting irritable, um, starting to sweat after meals, uh, you know, sweating profusely at night, obviously. And uh, but I was recomping, right? I was super strong in the gym. I was kicking ass for that one hour, one and a half hours that I found my way to the gym. And the rest of the day, I had a perpetual rain cloud over my head. But at that time, I didn't really pay that no mind because, well, I was living in Holland at the time. And there's not much to smile about when you live in Holland. I can tell you that. So um, from having a, a quality of life uh, out of a 10, I went from a six down to a four, which isn't that much of a change. Right, so after a while, due to peer pressure, I went to 700 milligrams. I think that was week, well, maybe, uh, you know, let's say uh, week eight to 12, right? If I remember correctly, it's been such a long time ago. Then I got more and more side effects, but the recomposition that I got and the strength gains, crazy. And keep in mind that during this time, I was running the cookie cutter test probe, Trimbalone acetate and Masteron propionate super shredder stack now at least i was smart enough to get all of those separately so i could manipulate the dosages so i think as the tremblone and the masteron was going up in a one to one ratio because that's the most anabolic ratio you can get out of your tremblone and masteron the testosterone is actually coming down so i think i started with 350 milligrams testosterone per week and then i brought that down as the tremblone was coming up because i didn't want to get too many side effects because back then the general consensus was because Tremblone has such a potent binding affinity for the androgen receptor, and now the testosterone is just floating around through the bloodstream, causing all kinds of side effects, definitely not related to all of the Tremblone that we're taking. No, 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 no. That testosterone faults has nothing to do with the Tremblone. Do you get night sweats? Testosterone, not Tremblone. Anger management issues? Testosterone, 100%. Not the Tremblone, not the copious amounts of Tremblone that you're running. Right? Everything else, right? insomnia, all of that bad stuff, it's all testosterone fault. So you have to bring that down as the trembolone was going up. And hair loss, yes, that's also testosterone fault because testosterone converts into dihydrotestosterone. testosterone. It has nothing to do with the masterone that you're running in a one-to-one -one ratio with your trembolone. <sighs> Thank God things have changed quite a bit since then. So low test, high trend, high masterone to match. I think I was running 175 milligrams testosterone propionate when the Tremblone went from 700 milligrams per week up to 1,000 milligrams per week. And that's when everything fell apart. But I didn't want to disappoint all of the other GS15 disciples on the board, the Global Elf Mods and the Wizards. I think I, think I was a wizard as well during this time. Right? It was really an accomplishment when you got assigned as a wizard on the boards. Fun times. So 700 to 1000 milligrams Tremblone acetate per week, but I think I kept the Mastron at 700 milligrams per week because I was pissing my brains out every single night. Literally, I lost seven kilograms, 15 pounds every single night. I, hold a, I held a decent amount of water during the day, probably because I was in a very high inflammatory state from all of that Tremblone. And again, the brand that I was using at the time coming from the UK, which shall not be named. I think it's already gone bunk or rogue or whatever, right? I had a, a crackdown at the time. And that's probably my earliest recollection of running a synthetic carrier oil because I remember preloading all of those insulin syringes. This was also very hyped on the GH15 message boards. Groundbreaking information at that time. I was preloading all of my insulin syringes. And of course, when you run a gram of Tremblone, 700 milligrams of Mastron and a tiny tad bit of testosterone propionate, that's still 21 insulin syringes. <laughs> 21 insulin syringes for the week. And then you start jabbing, jabbing yourself all over the place to the point you literally feel like a pincushion. But everybody was doing it, so I was doing it too. Right? And at every injection site, you get a little bit of inflammation, a little bit of a, 
a bubble. And even though, right, those insulin syringes, you can jab in a little bit deeper than they're intended for, still redness and post injection pain and a little bit of swelling at that area. So that was probably the time that I got a severe um, inflammatory state. And now that I remember and looking back, all of those insulin syringes, like the rubber stopper, this is where I got it from in all of those videos, which I released a year or two ago, that rubber stopper would literally swell up like a tampon. It would go from this little bit to this. And then the later on in the week, right, the last two insulin syringes you would use from the Trembolone. So that's like the last seven or eight insulin syringes that you were going through. The rubber stopper literally fell apart and you could see the rubber come off. It would make its way closer and closer and closer to the needle to the point you think I'm injecting this rubber into my body. It's never going to go away. So you had to toss all of your preloaded syringes. So I learned at the time already, but I didn't know it was caused by the synthetic carrier oil. Was it ethyl oleate? Was it propylene glycol or polyethylene glycol? Mo monoethylene glycol? I have no idea. I, glycol, probably, right? I did run some injectable androl at the time, which was stellar, but you could smell that a vial of injectable anadrol before it even arrived because the the smell would simply permeate from the postman and just blow through the entire neighborhood so you could smell like i think my anadrol is about to arrive right yeah again good time so preloaded insulin syringes high inflammatory state at the end of the day i would hold about seven kilos of water my face would literally swell up to the point i looked like a yokozuna sumo wrestler after he just finished 10 instant noodles laced with monosodium glutamate <laughs> yes that's how bad it was so i would pee all night i would literally get up every hour so even though a trembolone already gives you terrible insomnia so first the first hour you would lay awake maybe the first three peas you would lay awake, staring at the ceiling, waiting for your body to kind of fall asleep, even though you're still in this uh, fight or flight state, perpetually throughout the night. I mean, the nightmares that I had running Tremblon, that could be a whole separate video just by itself. So first, the first three P's, you would be awake and then you would fall asleep. And then you would get up every single hour just to pee more. You don't running that much Tremblon and Mastron, which at least stayed at the same dose. Um, and then overnight, the night sweats would come and every time I woke up, my bed would get wetter and wetter and more soaked and more soaked to the point and turned into a swamp. And that's exactly how it smelled because on that much Trembolone, your sweat smells horrendous. Absolutely disgusting. I made a video about how to mitigate all of the sweat that might occur when you're on a heavy cycle. I'll link it at the end of this one. But man, my bed literally smelled and looked like a swamp. It would melt or I would melt overnight i would sweat so much that the entire bed would be soaked disgusting now of course after a week or two of that so say uh, midway through my thousand milligrams of trimbolone acetate per week cycle at the tail end of running that much trimbolone already for several weeks in duration i figured out you know what even though it's summer and my door is wide open luckily for me running this much trimbolone um all of the mosquitoes that come into my bedroom at night are not bothering me they probably thought i smelled disgusting just like I felt I smelled disgusting. So at least I didn't get poked full of holes with the mosquitoes which were present. Uh, they were just buzz around my head and keep me awake, but never poke me. Too scared, too intimidated by the trembolone sandwich. So I was smart enough to get a fan and then buy a, um, a body blanket, which is, you know, um, kind of porous and allows all of this air to kind of radiate and uh, permeate through, allowing you to kind of cool down. So the first two weeks was horrendous, but you know, not sweating that much, not losing that much electrolytes and not waking up with adductors, which are literally, um, you know, completely locked up to the point. Uh, what is it called? A Xenia on the top would be very proud of you, right? From GoldenEye James Bond. That's how locked up <laughs> my adductors were at some points. So before getting the fan and the body towel blanket, I would pee maybe three and a half liters and sweat out three and a half liters. But after using the fan and the towel, I would pee out seven liters because I would barely sweat because that thing would be on max to the point it literally burned out. We're talking about summer here and summer in Holland is still 35 degrees even well in the evening it's probably cooling down to maybe 27 degrees which is still scorching hot but before it burned out it started to rattle. Now guess what when you're on that much trim alone you're so irritable a mosquito will set you off a dishwasher overflowing will set you off. Basically, everything sets you off. I was so freaking irritable. 
I literally hate it myself. And this is one of the reasons why I discontinued the Tremblone early because I wanted to run it for eight weeks. Um, can you believe that? Eight weeks on a thousand milligrams of Tremblone, I would have died, right? If he dies, he died and I certainly would have. Um, so after four weeks, I decided, you know what? This is not for me. This is crazy. All of these disciples on the GH15 message boards are lunatics. Um, so I discontinued the trend there and then. But of course, the fan was rattling. It was burning out. It started to smell because it was so hot. And at one point in the middle of the night, that fan went flying into the street. <laughs> That's how angry this was. Stupidly, because now I had no fan. And now I started to sweat all night again. And this is just every single night of running a thousand milligrams of Tremolone. I can't mention how many times I had to count to 400, you know, holding myself back in particular situations because I was simply too agitated. I had a decent physique, 92, 95 kilograms. I mean, again, 95 kilograms on how many milligrams? It's, it's close to 2000 milligrams of steroids combined and, and the most potent ones, I would say, right? I was basically shredded, but my face was getting more puffy, more puffy, more puffy because all of the synthetic carrier oils were present um, and I was highly uh, inflamed, right? But during the day, I was quite lean, right? I had a good six pack, you know, shredded veins everywhere. Um, so I was in a good shape, good pussy pulling physique, I would say, but I was so agitated. I was so annoyed. The littlest things, I, would, I wanted to squeeze people's face. That's how annoyed I was. Now, at the smallest things, right? And you realize that after you come off Tremblone, how much of a kid you are, right? Or how much of a kid I was to my family, to my friends, to girls. Man, I was intolerable. So I'm very thankful to my wife pulling the plug on the Tremblone sandwich when, before we got married because she was like, you know what? Uh, this relationship is not going to work even if you run a low dose of Tremblone just to maintain your physique. So it's either me or the Tremblone. Oh, she didn't give me an ultimatum, but that's basically what it boiled down to. Um, you want this relationship to work, something's got to go. So Trimble went bye-bye. And now, what is it, eight years later, close to 10 years in a relationship, still happily married. And funnily enough, I've gained a lot more size after throwing the trend in the trash. I went up to 120 kilos on test GH and insulin. Of course, nobody talked about that on a GH15 message board. All the exotics had to be in. You can't possibly get big on bioidentical hormones alone. Again, we've learned a lot, or at least I have learned a lot since then, actively sharing that here with you guys on YouTube. So don't do what I did. It was horrible. That's just a night sweat in the anger management. Um, I got, you know, hot during the day after each meal to the point I was just literally dripping sweat into my uh, food bowl. And then I would get like a jaw pump to the point I couldn't even eat anymore. I had to blend my food, which, you know, when you're dieting, you're blending your chicken and rice and broccoli because that's the way to get shredded, right? You're blending all of that together. And you add maybe a dash of pineapple juice. And that's a good tip from the GH15 message board, though. Add a little bit of pineapple juice to some of your meals, right? Make sure it's fresh pineapple juice because nobody told us at the time that a pasteurized pineapple juice um, doesn't have the enzymes which help to break down proteins, right? It needs to be raw pineapple juice, preferably fresh, because those have the digestive enzymes which are otherwise broken down in the pasteurization process. So uh, that's one of the few tips and tricks that I learned from there. Uh, but everything else, yeah, I wish I kind of unlearned. And if I had a time machine, I would never sign up there because I think, honestly, honestly, guys, no joke. GH15 message board is responsible for so many kidney problems in our bodybuilding and fitness space nowadays, right? Promoting trend, not talking about blood work, not talking about uh, ways to mitigate the blood pressure issues and, and not really uh, digging up the scientific evidence. Again, that's, you know, a community effort, obviously, um, to show that the amyloid plaque buildup is there and all of the deleterious effects on the kidneys. Just talk about trend and high dosages and you're, you will literally mutate and turn IFB pro. But to be fair, I didn't dabble with 12 to 50 IUs of growth hormone either, which is supposedly where the magic really happens. Okay, I'll leave it here. I got a ton more side effects along the way, but after four weeks, I threw in a towel. I threw away all of my Tremblone, um, kind of promising myself to never do something that stupid ever again. With consecutive cycles, maybe um, later on, a couple blasts down the line of this third cycle that lasted a decade in duration, I dabbled with um, a little bit more Trimbalone 
at lower dosages, trimalone acetate, never touch trimalone acetate ever again. After that uh, first time on the second cycle. Yeah. So uh, my wife asked me to stop. I obliged. And honestly, guys, I don't think I'll ever run trimalone ever again because I'm a much more rounded person now. I got too much going on in my life besides being a one-dimensional meathead, which I certainly was back then. I mean, that's all I cared about, making a little bit of money. I was single, didn't have to care about, you know, a significant other. Um, I was blasting through girls like nothing else, uh, even though I was uh, very intolerable to be around, especially on that much trimblone. So for all of the girls that I met during this time, <laughs> I'm really, really sorry for being such a... F really, that's what I was back then a one-dimensional only focused on bodybuilding right you all have to go through this process i'm sure some of you guys can relate doing something stupid like this in your younger years <laughs> but to be fair i mean i was 28 years old at this time so i wasn't exactly young i should have known better but you know to be fair i was late to the steroid party i started at the age of 26 which is now unheard of everybody starts at their late teens early 20s right so at least i waited a little bit longer but as soon as Pandora's box opened, I ran right to the Trimbaloni sandwich, up to a thousand milligrams per week. I will never do this again. <laughs> I promise, right? Don't do what I did. Learn from my mistakes. I hope it was informative, educational, and entertaining. We call that edutainment nowadays. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know down below in the comment section. I'll record a video discussing my craziest cycles ever. I've done many of them because I was stupid over a decade ago i made plenty of mistakes i've learned a lot since then but i still remember all of the bad things that i did to my body when i was just getting my hands dirty with performance enhancing drugs so at least take it as a learning lesson don't do what i did um even though i still came out healthy so i'll leave it here thank you guys so much for watching you can find everything that i'm associated with down below in the youtube description section follow me on instagram and tiktok at vigor steve vigor screw you guys know what to do a front double bicep for the vigorous crew and i think this front double bicep is more impressive i'll be completely honest more impressive than the time i ran a thousand milligrams trimble on acetate plus 700 milligrams mastron propionate and a tiny teeny amount of 175 milligrams testosterone propionate per week uh, does anybody have a time machine to spare right i would love to pay for it go back in time and slap myself across the face for even signing up to the gh15 message boards I just should have stayed with intense muscle and build up a relationship with Dante Trudell, Scott Stevenson, Dr. Scott Stevenson is, Ken Skip Hill, Justin Harris, and everybody else who's still part of the fitness industry, all coming from intense muscle, right? Live and learn. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.